so we've been doing, uh, as you know, sort of um, a non-residential retreat based on the subject of patience and using my recent book, Patients, The Art of Peaceful Living, as reference. And what we have now is just um, a little summation, um, what I prepared for this evening, just some individual lines that came uh, in our various times uh, of looking through the book. And the reason I chose these particular lines is that um, a number of them were what provoked questions. And uh, a number of times we just didn't get enough time to answer all of those questions. So tonight I'm going to just read uh, quickly through some of these lines. And then whatever questions may be on your mind related directly to this or any aspect of patience or any aspect of your practice or what time does the next subway come in, whatever it is that you want to ask and we'll, we'll explore and see what we have. So, from patience, for many the most difficult person with whom to be patient is oneself. Patience with oneself is essential if we are to enjoy happiness and equanimity through life's constantly changing nature with its unfair and disruptive conditions. Some of us have experienced so much impatience that we just assume we do not have a lot of patience. We allow ourselves to believe that anger and impatience are a part of who we are rather than understanding they are feelings that arise. Feelings do not define character. So in other words, a statement like, I'm not a patient person, is going to be an inaccurate person. You may experience impatience quite often, but that's quite different. In order for us to practice patience, we must have courage, wisdom, and a compassionate heart. We must be wise enough to address disagreement with intelligence and thoughtfulness. If we cling to our feelings of anger, we are the ones who suffer. Patience is born when we create a pause between our experience of a feeling and our response to that feeling. Without a pause, we are likely to find ourselves reacting in our conditioned manner. Acceptance does not mean that we do nothing to alleviate suffering. It means that we can be patient and then take action that is well considered, wise, and compassionate rather than reactive, unskillful, or vengeful. Patience, unlike popular misconception, is not characterized by passivity. If we want others to listen to our views, we must be willing to listen to theirs. No matter how far afield the views of another may be from our own, rest assured that it is safe to listen. And of course, this was the area that we spoke about when we were looking at the political and election season and realizing how difficult it can be to listen to the views of others. Yet, if we want people to listen to us, we're going to have to listen to them. With practice, it becomes easier to identify what we are feeling. We sense when impatience is arising, and we direct ourselves to stop and become aware of what we are experiencing in that moment. The causes of impatience travel a two-way street. We need to look at our actions that can lead others to become impatient with us. We have all seen and felt the destructive power of a single moment of anger. Apologies can help, but we can never take back the words we have spoken. In every moment that the mind is focused on petty and vengeful thoughts, we are not at peace. Conversely, when our mind is inclined toward thoughts that are kind, compassionate, and generous of spirit, 
we experience a sense of ease and equanimity. The people, events, and conditions outside of ourselves are not the cause of our happiness or unhappiness. It is our perception of those phenomena that create our quality of life. We can easily give undue weight to the words of others if they massage the ego, or conversely, if they confirm any feelings of unworthiness. Admiration can feel good, but don't become attached to it. If you, fre if you frequently act in an impatient or angry manner, you will undoubtedly have regrets as you cause yourself and others suffering. It is natural that you would want to change, and there is no question that you can. No matter what the external circumstances, your impatience can only exist within you. You develop patience by working on yourself, not by attempting to change others. To forgive does not mean to condone. To forgive does not mean to forget. Sometimes to forget would be unwise, but to forgive is wise. When we offer forgiveness to another, we offer freedom to ourselves. So let's take just a minute to sit with those thoughts and then we'll hear what's on your mind. 